Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 34 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in to today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were taking a look at setting preferences in Adobe InDesign. Today we're talking about Lightroom. I've got some quick tips for synchronizing settings you make or changes you make inside the develop module. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can see on the screen in front of you, I'm in the library module. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on an image, hold the shift key to select the range of images I want to change. I'll jump over to the develop module and I just want to draw your attention to the film strip. I want you to see that the first image I have selected is actually a little bit brighter than the rest of the series that's in that film strip. The first image or the brightest image is sometimes referred to as the most selected. So any changes I make to this image I can synchronize across the board. Let's go ahead and take a look. I've intentionally changed the white balance before I started the video. So I'll go ahead and put this back to the proper white balance that I had set. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of the panel and hit the sync button. When I do this, the dialog prompt shows me every single item that could be synced. And notice that right now everything is checked. I can hit the check all button, I can hit check none, or in my case, I'm going to pick the individual item I want to change. Because I don't want to synchronize everything, I just want to synchronize the white balance. So I'll hit check none, then I'll hit white balance, and I'll hit the synchronize button. And if you watch the film strip carefully, all the images change pretty quickly. So if we step through, you can see that the white balance has been corrected on all the images. So let me go through, I'll just make some quick changes to this image. I'm going to go ahead and convert it to black and white. I'll increase the contrast, bump up the clarity. We'll throw in a little bit of a fill light there on the front to brighten it. And then I'm going to go here and do some split toning just to add some color to the highlights and shadows. So we'll just boost it there. Tiny little boost here. Now I've got this cyanotype hey, with heavy contrast. And I'll go ahead and hit synchronize. Once again, I get the dialog prompt. This time I could go to the sections that I changed. So it wasn't white balance, it was my tone section, it was my color section. I right, split toning. And if I'm unsure, I can certainly hit check all. But here's the thing, check all, it's going to take every single setting. I didn't really change everything, but you could make that choice. So I'll go ahead and hit synchronize. And once again in the film strip, if you take a look, all the images once again change. Start with the last image pop the way through. So this is a great way to manage a series of images. If you're shooting under certain conditions and you need to make a series of changes, that's a great way to do it. But there's also another feature that people don't utilize too much and that's auto sync. Take a look at the bottom of the panel and there's a little toggle switch right here next to the sync button. If I flip this up, now I'm in auto sync mode. And in fact, you can see if I hit reset, all of the images in the film strip reset automatically. This means any change I make right now is going to change across the board in real time. So I'm going to just create a fake pseudo hill David Hill recipe. This is one that's pretty popular across the net. You've probably seen it in many, many places. And you can see as I change this in real time, every single item in the film strip is starting to pop. So if I go through and click on them, I didn't have to hit the sync button all of these images have been adjusted in real time. Go through, take a look, and here's something that I want to point out about synchronizing your images. Notice the last image in the series didn't really fit. That's going to happen sometimes when you decide to sync your changes. Right? Those images were really similar, but the brightness, the exposure in the last image isn't exactly the same as the first few. So I would have to go and tweak that image individually. Now, if you're using Lightroom 2 and you want to know how to use auto sync, you don't have that little flip switch. If you're using Lightroom 2 and you want to use the auto sync feature, you have to hold the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac and click the sync button. When you do that, it will say auto sync and then you can turn it on.
So these have been some quick tips for the develop module. I hope you can take advantage of them for your workflow. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. As always, I appreciate it when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you know I create these videos in response to your questions. Get a hold of me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+. Leave questions here on the YouTube channel or my blog, ajwood.com. You guys have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.